Hi, I'm Storm. Hi, I'm Mike. And we're from Events Group. What are we talking about today, Storm? Uh, today we're talking about something we sell on the website. Yeah. And is it all of these or are we just speaking about these? So for this video, we're talking about these. Um, so these have a few different names, um, a post bracket, um, a TD1, or the code is BRAC-1AH um, on our website. Um, now, normally, the, normally you would use at least two per sign. And so we've got the poll here to demonstrate them. Um, I have had a lot of customers even calling this an egg ring bracket. <laughs> it's kind of like an egg <laughs> ring. Well, if you lose your but ring. But it's got this tie here. So if people don't know what to call it, if you only remember it as the egg ring bracket, most of our staff would probably know what you're talking about. In fact, you could probably type egg ring bracket on our website and it would probably come up. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, the purpose of this is for industrial type road signs, traffic signs. Um, and we sell them by the bucket loads uh, because uh, people who are installing road signs, traffic signs, would use these every day. Um, and um, they're probably, in my opinion, the best way to mount a sign onto a, onto a post um, that's a post like this. This is a 60 mil outside diameter pipe. This is just an off cut for this demonstration or video. Um, just um, whenever you're talking about um, road signs, the posts for road signs, uh, just be aware that uh, some people would call this a 50 mil nominal bore, um, nominal bore meaning the inside diameter of the pipe. Um, so depending on which industry you're in, as to whether it's called a 60 mil outside diameter or a 50 mil nominal bore. Um, we always call it a 60 mil outside diameter in, in it, pipe in our um, industry. Uh, we sell all different lengths of the, the post, but this uh, video is more about the bracket. Um, so how you... does the, um, so this is the bracket to hold the sign onto the pole? Yeah. Is that what it's for? Yeah. So how would that work? How yeah. Does... Um, so yeah, good question. So, uh, you'll s notice obviously there's a, uh, thread bolt, which, um, is a little bit special in, in a way where the thread actually tapers. So that's quite rare in a bolt. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's deliberate for a reason. Um, and we'll explain why, um, uh, just before I do explain about it, um, obviously it has a, a washer, um, and obviously the thread is here. This is an M10 bolt, if you want to know the technical um, dimension of it. Um, we would call this a, a hex bolt uh, because it's got the hexagonal um, shape to the head for, you know, using a ratchet socket set or something. Um, and um, um, so going back to um, the design of this to have the taper at the end, um, in some industries, that's just so it makes it easier to, to start threading into the, into the bracket. That's not necessarily why it has that design on this one. Um, it's kind of more because um, the way that these have been designed is when you put the um, bracket over the, the pipe um, and then you do this up, the, uh, the, the length of the thread on this bolt is uh, very precise um, so that once you put a normal road sign or traffic sign, um, if you've got a hole in the traffic sign, um, once you tension this bolt, it will make a very slight small indentation into the pipe, not enough to notice from a, a distance if you remove this. However, uh, if you were to investigate the pipe, um, if it's been in existence for a while and had multiple of the signs, Move, relocated, added, removed, whatever, you know, adjusted heights or whatever. You might notice some tiny little indentations up and down the pipe in various locations. And that's just from um, this bolt being tensioned. Um, the perfect tension will be when it pretty much stops if you're doing it by hand. Um, and that will mean it's tight on the sign so the sign won't flop and flap around in the wind and make a noise. 
um, and um, also the indentation will just be that perfect amount so that um, you're not over tensioning and snapping the head off the, the bolt head um, and um, yeah it can't move once it's tight like it won't go up and down or left or right it'll just be the perfect amount of adjustment so you can't just sort of use any old m10 bolt uh, because the, the the taper allows it to just dent into the the pipe just that perfect amount so that nothing breaks nothing over tensions nothing's under tension you can do it by hand um, and then everything um, can can be tensioned perfectly without having to you know worry or think about you know um, is it tight enough or not tight enough uh, you know sometimes that it's that it's not tight enough just because the sign might still flap around on the on the um on the bracket part here which has the flat part here and if there's a gap there and it's flapping around uh, it could be pretty irritating for someone's so office nearby or something does the sign go in between this and here yeah so normally we would have a, um, a hole in the middle of the top of the sign yep. and a hole in the middle of the bottom of the sign sort of centered um we could possibly put a photo up in the video yeah um and um so by having those holes in the signs allows um you to ad adjust the uh this bracket anywhere that you want that's appropriate on the sign yep. on, on the pole at the right height above above the ground mm -hmm. and then um it's a little bit awkward if you're doing it by yourself, um, especially if you're on a ladder, but you would put the uh, bolt through the hole in the sign, mm -hmm. um, one at the top and one at the bottom. If the sign's significantly bigger, you could um, you could put a third bracket just so that um, it's well supported and mm -hmm. um, doesn't have any sort of, um, you know, banana bends in the sign or something like that, which can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's why you need two of these to put the top and the bottom. Of the yeah, side. we sell it. We sell these brackets individually, uh, but uh, you can um, buy minimum two at a time for a sign. Um, and um, if you wanted to buy bulk, you're going to always get a discount as well. A lot of the traffic and road signs, these are an optional extra. However, um, if they're not seen there as an optional extra, you can actually just search for them. Um, in the listings and, um, you know, the bulk discount supply for, you know, different um, di different price tiers. So, you know, maybe uh, 5, 10, 30, 50, 100, then the price can, can come down significantly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, is there, say, if I was going to put a sign up with these, is yep. there, um, like, a rules on how high the sign needs to be? Yep. Yeah. So, um I will mention that briefly. It's a bit off topic, but um, so Vic Roads, which is where we are in uh, Victoria, um, there will be RTA main roads type uh, specifications or regulations as well. Uh, basically, 99% uh, of the time, the sign should be well above head height. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends if it's in a high pedestrian area or um, not in a pedestrian area. And... Um, so say, for example, if it's in a car park, people are getting in now, their car's definitely a high pedestrian area or pedestrian crossing would be a high pedestrian area. Um, in Victoria, Vic Road specifies that the bottom of the sign needs to be at least 2.5 metres off the ground. That's to the bottom of the sign. Um, if it's not in a high pedestrian area, then the bottom of the sign can be uh, two, two metres from the bottom of the sign to the ground. Um, there are rare exceptions like a no entry sign, a keep left sign, um, uh, or say for example, if it's a parking spot where um, there's some bushes or something like that, um, and it's just one bay, someone might want to just put sort of a, a sign in the middle of that bay that's not mega high. Um, and if it's in bushes or something, then obviously no one's going to come in, into contact with with the sign and potentially get themselves a, an abrasion or an injury, um, you know, cut or anything. Yep. So um, signs can be a little bit uh, sharp on the edges. Mm. So um, you always want them well at, away from head height because um, it can probably really uh, injure someone if they were running. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
that all we need to know about these? So the last couple of things I'll mention is um, what they're made out of. Um, so the uh, this part of the bracket is um, an aluminium, and so it's a marine grade aluminium, and it's very strong um, aluminium. This ha will have some flex in it when you're doing the bolt up against the the, the pie, um, so it will elongate slightly when you're doing this upper as well. Um, which also helps it to grip onto the pipe without it being able to rotate around the pole at all. Um, and also the strength of it means that it can, you know, um, really uh, do the heavy lifting when it comes to, you know, holding a large sign, which is, you know, a lot of wind um, surface area if it's in a, you know, um, in a windy location or there's big gusts or gales or anything like that. So it's a very strong um, thing as well. Um, the thread would need to be obviously pretty strong to be able to do up the bolt on it very tight um, so without pulling out the thread um, because this is steel and that's aluminium. But um, don't be fooled by it being aluminium. It's not soft at all. It's a very high temper steel. Um, the bolts and washers, they're, they're mostly um, just zinc coated. Um, you can't. You can get stainless steel washers. Um, the bolts will very rarely come in hot dip gal, um, but they're less common to have a hot dip gal um, bolt. Um, so mostly these are um, zinc for a reason. Um, the hot dip gal can sort of be a bit more uh, awkward or troublesome, difficult to try and screw into the thread and they're much more expensive and a little bit more rare. So mostly these are zinc, which is fine for 99% of applications. They'll sometimes rust um, Bayside. Um, however, the, um, the benefits outweigh, the, the, the negatives outweigh the benefits for having a, a hot tip gal bolt, um, considering most signs on Bayside. So for example, parking side at the beach, probably be there for 20 years. So if you have to cut it off once every 20 years because it's rusted on there, then so be it. Um, um, the zinc would normally last, you know, 20 to 50 years out, out away from the ocean. Maybe at the ocean it might start rusting after 10 years, five, 10 years. And so it doesn't completely rust off. It just, it just binds on there so well. You find it difficult to get it off without angle grinding it off. Can you just use your hands just to tighten them up or we have to get a tool? Uh, you just start it with your fingers and your hands and you tension it with a, um, with, a, with a socket set or an impact wrench or, you know, if you have an attachment to your drill or something, you can yep. use those. But um, generally just use a you know, socket set. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's about it. Um, if you want to buy this, you can buy it from www.advancedgroup.com.au. And if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Right.